let's say the likes of Tim Pool, and you would have to have some kind of fame to hold weight, as in to ask for the format to be different. Let's just say, right? Now, all I'd be asking for is the format no, no, he no, normally no, has. No. I'm asking for the format he normally That's has. That's it. Yeah. I don't want to have Please to point up with to any other time. Oh, done, John. Yeah, yeah Brian. Right. Yeah, I, I, uh, John is correct. Like, I, I'm agreeing with John. I see the format that Tim Poole is trying to put a flat arbor into is not the normal format he has of his show. Normally, he'd have someone in there, and him and his panel or whoever else will, will, will feel questions to them. Right. Now, what AI said is you would have to have some kind of fame or whatever. I mean, let's say the Tucker Carlson, the the world, whatever, right? To, you know, or the, you know, the, the Jordan Peterson, whatever, right? To, to hold any sway there. But you, does he want the right person who has the correct information? Because we're talking, this is a different situation we're talking about this, when we're talking about this topic. You're not going to have, like, if you just want a famous person, you can get Mark Sargent. Because he's the only famous mm. person, radio, David Weiss. You know what I mean? Or does he want someone who actually has a fuller grasp of the information? Because if he wants someone who has a fuller grasp of the information, he might as well have AI on. AI is every bit as adept as I am, or anyone else. So what, you know what I mean? The point being is that just because AI is not famous, does that mean that Tim Poole should not approach him, even though his grasp of the information and, and his ability to relate is going to be exceptional in comparison to so a lot of a lot of other flat artists. You know what I mean? That's yeah, the problem with, it's, the, with, the, with the famous thing. What the hell has famous got to do with anything? Right. The, the thing is, is he is actively changing his format and then inviting us to a format where we know what, what the score is already. It's been repeated yeah. over and over and over again. If yeah. he really yeah, so my about entire, information. If I showed up to that show, yeah, so if I showed up to that show, the entire time I was on the show, I'd be making an example of how much of a punk bitch hypocrite he is until he kicked me off. I wouldn't even try to relay the information. I would just focus on, this is a topic that people care about. You're changing your format. They want to hear the evidence, and you're stopping them because you are a butthurt punk, right? And that information is out there that Ooh, they can go search touch. in other venues. Okay. And so your little punk bitch with your stupid knitted hat isn't going to stop this information because you want to change your format because you're a scared little punk bitch, right? And me telling him that is it's going to get more attention I wanna... to the flat earth, I would say, than going there and getting talked over by anti-flat earthers, right? I vote AI, go. Hello, what, AI, what, AI, this is the point. Like, we had this AI. happen the other day. Sure. Productive. We had this happen the other day, which actually made me have an epiphany in a way, which is a lot of times, like the other day, we were listening to uh, Tenth Man rebuke um, Witsit. Like everyone was engaging with Witsit back and forth. And then it was Tenth Man's turn. The first thing Tenth Man did was just rebuke Witsit for being a punk bitch, hypocritical, you know, punk with his little, oh, you're you're not intelligent as me. He didn't even focus on the content of the, of the, uh, of the argument at all. He was just focusing on how, how much of a punk this guy is for trying to debate a topic that has merit with, I'm smarter than you, right? And that's the way you need to treat Tim Pool in front of his audience, right? But you need to go in there and, and smack Absolutely. him senseless with verbosity about how much of a punk bitch he is so his audience sees, wait a minute, these motherfuckers who claim to be ju right. journalists are hiding this truth from me. Uh, Apologies. Oh, no, no. I, I, I think it's that is a genius way to handle it. And good on 10th. I, I, I wouldn't. Yeah, keep, in mind, keep in mind, keep in mind, friends, that, when you walk absolutely. in, when you walk into Tim Pool, right, if you're a prominent flat earther in any way, even in a niche part of the community, Tim Pool is honored to have you, not the other way around. Exactly. And that's the thing. So you're uh, telling me, so you're telling me that I'm going to be welcome on Tim Pool's channel because I'm an OG flat earther of India. <laughs> <laughs> well, look, there's a, yeah, there's another way. Do, so you. people like contention, right? And if they're already predisposed to defend themselves against a new idea because they think it's dangerous to their present ideas, a good way to trick them is to actually create a guest structure where it's not 
flat earther versus anti flat earther, where it's flat earther versus flat earther. So, for example, Brian and Whitson on the same show. That, but that might be too much chaos. Yeah. <laughs> of course, yeah, I agree. Uh, the, the problem, the problem is, right? When it, this was first put, first put to me the other day, and I heard Matt Toon's name involved, I'm wondering why Matt Toon. The first thing went through my head is why is he, why is he enthusiastic about this? Right? He wouldn't be enthusiastic about any situation where he wouldn't have the upper hand in some way or have some sway. Right? That's the first thing went through my head. The second thing went through my head when Central Group was saying it to me is. Do I have the enthusiasm to spend two hours talking to Mac Toon success, successfully? Like, if it's Brian Cox, I've got the enthusiasm. Right? Or someone of note. If it's Mac Toon, I've got the flat out. Do I have the enthusiasm? Am I not just going to turn up there and start abusing them for two hours or an hour and get kicked off the show? Because that's all I feel they deserve most of the time. Just, just taking the piss out of them. Sorry for the swearing, Nate. Do you know what I mean? Turn up because how do I take them serious? I need someone that I can at least take serious. I don't really take my team serious, other than somebody <clears> who <throat> you have to watch your back with because he's sneaky. That doesn't mean he has a, that he he's going to be. Who's you know what I mean? So th that <laughs> will I will I have the enthusiasm in that situation to do what needs to be done? It's if you look down, you see 10 feet, 10,000 people watching live. That might give you a bit of motivation. I tell you what, I've been, I've been, a, I've that. been a, specifically addressed and had my questions answered on platforms with thousands of people, on thousands. It's very simple. You just show up, you watch, you make a couple of primer um, chats, and then you come in with a coup de gras chat that they're going to answer at the end and both sides get to answer and you make it pointed enough to where it gets your point across. And then all those thousands of people get to hear your point addressed by both sides, whether they like it or not, unless they turn their ears off. You see, I think uh, so there's, like, what AO, I, what I, hold on, AO, before you go on, what I meant to say there is, what I meant to say there is there's ways to be involved in these huge broadcasts without actually being invited. You know, to to actually be the primary speaker. That's all I was saying. Go ahead. Well, I think what people need to take on board is that flat earthers, if you're seeing this as an opportunity, um, then you you might be seeing it wrong. Because it's an opportunity for Tim Poole and his team to get a completely mm -hmm. unique set of information. Out to an out to a completely unsuspecting audience. That's the opportunity, right? For me as a flat earther, I shouldn't view this as some brilliant opportunity. Not if I have to deal with some anti flat earther who 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 have dealt with it before. I mean, and who lots of people have dealt with it before, who's just hanging around making money out of the situation, and who's just basically being a pain in everyone's neck. Some dishonest person who won't concede when they're wrong. Like, no, that, that is, to, how is that an opportunity to me? Why should I get enthusiastic about that? Well, I, you have I think to see I like you the, uh, as the person. Uh, he should be as, uh, just one second, John. <laughs> Sorry. As I always said, he should be honored to have you on, not you honored to be on there. Go on, John. I, well, I really can get behind AI's um, position what, uh, that he put forward. But, you know, you go on there and you you go with the intent of disseminating the information and that's what you are there to do but when what happens happens because it's happened a thousand times before instead of trying to argue with them just do what ai said and point out what they're actually doing instead of trying to convince them of anything <sighs> And then their audience may seek us out. Yeah. Yeah, like I'm I'm complete I would be completely happy with attending such an such a venue without giving one thread of conclusionary evidence, argument, or even the proposition that the earth is flat. My entire time would just be recognizing 
that this is a social phenomenon that's occurring, recognizing that many people who are involved feel like the in information has been suppressed, and then demonstrating to those people who already feel that way that Tim Pool is an agent of that suppression and he needs to wake the heck up and stop being a hypocrite, right? If I, if I left, leaving everyone with that taste in their mouth, I'd consider it a victory. Absolutely. Uh, yeah. I want to send AI. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. I agree. Cool. So, and, and I'd probably have, I'd probably coordinate it, right? So that I at least had somebody dropping hints about where to go to actually get the information without Tim Pool's ass all up in it. You know what I mean? It's like, hey, if you want to hear this information oh, yeah. without Tim Pool huffing the globe crack, Go to go to check out the uh, you know this these uh, channels over here. <laughs> if you're sick and tired of, if you're sick and tired of beta cucks like Tim Pool trying to tell you what you should and shouldn't believe because he's too butthurt about his predispositions of his cosmology, go over here. <laughs> oh, I like it. I like yeah, it. think about this too. After I after I booty smacked Tim Pool for public consumption, there are gonna be people knocking on my door to want to talk to me, right? Ooh, maybe, maybe that's true. May yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And I'll be like I'm watching my um, I'll be like I'm watching my hair that weekend. <laughs> hey Nathan, you're hearing this? I can claim to have achieved that, but it is on a very small scale here in India, so I wouldn't boast about it. But yes. When I pummeled a Glober on his own channel, there were people coming back to me asking to know more about Flat Earth. That was a win, what I consider. Uh, to Pablo, he says, thank you all for putting in the work. Thank you, Pablo. Yeah, because here's a sentiment. Here's a sentiment that you guys missed because you were uh, offline for a minute. Is that... There's tons of people who are coming to this topic now, right? And all they have mainly is the front-facing arguments from the now side. They don't have the benefit of the journey we've been on for the past 10 years. So when they hear a lot of things, they're not really you know, up to speed on it. They're like, okay, that sounds intriguing, but I'm not, I don't really know if I have the time. I, I can't really invest that much time. I have to go to a source I trust. They may be like, you know what? I like Tim Pool. He has a flat earther on. I'm going to check it out, right? But that person had a, had an actual interest in finding out what the flat earth position is and when they're when they're demonstrated and it's made aware in their mind that somebody's actually essentially gatekeeping them then they might be even more interested whereas otherwise they would just leave tim pool saying oh tim pool had it handled i can go about my life well that's the, that's the thing you see what you just said is very true because there is a lot of people out there who will just go to who they trust, you know, to get to to be relayed information, not realizing that that person might be very actively stopping the information, <clears throat> the correct information, getting to them. Go on. Yeah, what what AI just said is what I should have done on McToon's channel. In all honesty, instead of just trying to give them the information or correct where they were wrong. And they stopped me from speaking. I mean, that's why I was laughing so much. I didn't know what to do. Like, I, I'd never seen anyone lose their minds like that. So yeah, bravo AI, bravo. Hey, you gotta you gotta understand. Like when you when you're on a, ve a public venue, you're not there as a myopic representation of a niche piece of information. You're there representing all the people who have the same frustrations with the inability to address the situation properly. Right. And that's a large portion of people. We know this because in the past 10 years, all the social media access of people interested in flat earth went up exponentially. So much so that they actually had to intentionally change the algorithms. Now, intentionally changing the algorithms didn't delete the people who were interested in the topic, did it? You know, they're still there. They're still out there. Right, with their frustrations unvoiced and the ability to access the information limited. And that, that's, that's pissing them off. That's exactly why 
that, that exact sentiment is why I would not, I would much prefer to not have to deal with an anti flat outer on Tim Pool's show and rather just deal directly with Tim Pool and his bloody panel or whoever else. I'm grand with that. Yeah. That is something I can get behind. Trying to deal with an anti flat outer is so boring because when you bring up, the ter- when they bring up gravity, they will talk about a force, they won't even say what force it's all about. If you get them to even mutter the, the word gravity, it won't be in connection to the word force. And then they won't talk about which exact gravity they're talking about. They'll give some convoluted nonsense. And all you'll do is spend mo- all the debate basically trying to, get your, trying to get to correct them on their own stupid nonsense, which is fine for them. So the audience doesn't get to hear anything. All they'll get to hear is an, a debate between two people. And half the stuff you'll talk about, the audience won't know about anyway. Whereas if you're talking to the hosts of the show and they try any of that nonsense, they won't be expecting the responses that you will be able to give, that the anti-flat outer will be expecting and will already have tactics in place. To co- the barbed wire will already be in place. There will already be a moat dog. It's going to be very difficult. That They're going to build the wall higher. You know what I mean? They're going to do their best to yeah, yeah. stop the situation. Yeah, but that's why AI's tactic is so great. Yeah, you but know, that, that, that's what. That yeah, all he's doing instead of trying equation, to, you know? instead of trying to get over the barbed wire and climb the wall and 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 siege the castle, instead of doing that, he's just pointing out why do you need this? Why why are you putting this up? You jerk. That's what all he's doing. It's it's yeah, so much simpler what, than. It's so simple. Yes, it it's, it's. I have one thing to say though about it. It's why all you're saying it's fine once the person you're saying it to and addressing is the content creator themselves on their show. If you're trying to address an anti flat outer who's on their show and they're just sitting there as moderator, it's not going to make the same impact. As long as you're allowing the anti flat outer person to be there in your way. Right, then you're literally allowing another a big steel door to be closed and locked, and you're there with an an acetylene acetylene, uh, acetylene t- torch. So when they get through this door with a big hammer and everything else, and behind me do, you, you get through the door and the whole thing is over. Right, you will but get through AI's the door, pointing out, but all your time will be spent with that. But AI's pointing out you don't have to do that. That's the wrong way to go about it. He, the way he described going about it is the exact way all of us should go about it, I think, if we go on I think platform. that what he was saying, though, he can clarify. When he first said it and I agreed with him, I was, I, I was of the impression he was talking about a situation where the anti-flat outer wasn't mm-hmm. in the way. It was you and the channel content creator or whoever. Well, yeah, even if it was, like, let's say I showed up expecting to only do one-on-one with the show host, and he brought in an anti-flat earther. My only goal for the entire show would be to point out to the audience the reasons why he did that or might have done that, and that it's it's un- it's not appropriate, right? And to point out that this is a break from his usual tactic, and this shows that he, he's very concerned about this topic more than he's willing to let on, right? I'd basically do a psychological case for his audience that he's a punk bitch when it comes to this topic and maybe someday he'll grow a set of balls to be able to address the topic without a bodyguard in the room. Yeah. Yeah. There's nothing they can do that (laughs) could stop what AI is talking about. Yeah. Watch Listen to my headline. Listen to my headline on YouTube. Flat earther punks out Tim pool for being a jacked up bitch. There you go. That's my headline. I hope everybody's being quiet because they're thinking about this because it's a genius way to deal with this. My next headline, why is Tim Pool so afraid of, of questioning his own cosmology? My position would be this, John, that I like the sentiment. I wouldn't do it exactly as AI. Would do it, but then again, I'm not AI. 
but I would definitely be going into it, that situation with a level of confidence that is well above what would be expected, number one. Number two, I would view it as they are honoured to have me on there, not just I'm honoured to be on their show. Yeah. Excuse and number me. three, I would not, I would want the anti flat out or not there. I want them removed because they're only in the way. Now, what yeah. Ariel is talking about may be slightly different. Um, maybe, you know, his tactics would probably go get across even with an anti flat out or there. But I still would probably do it slightly different. Right. But you're talking about getting the information out, right, on 10 pools. You don't need to do that, though. Yeah, I you need to show that, exposing the character. No, no, no. You need to show that the information is being suppressed on that show. That is your number one. When they start stopping it, all you got to do is point it out. Yeah. And then all well, of the this isn't, this isn't a myopic. This, this ain't a myopic solution because some people will go to a to a show like Tim Pool because they frequent that type of content. They'll see that he's invited a, a prominent flat earther. They'll see that they, they've invited a prominent um, rebutter to flat earth arguments. They'll listen and they'll make their decision based on that show alone. And in that microcosm, it's settled for them from that point forward. Right. And so you, sometimes you have to shake that attitude up when people arrive that this little show is going to settle this issue for me. I'd rather, I'd rather some people leave unsettled right, than have them have them have a poor showing of the flat earth information because it's being stifled and then leave thinking that that was a good showing, you see. Like, oh, this is the best the flat earth has got. This was pathetic. Exactly. So if I go into that situation and I recognize that it's going to be a net net crapshoot for me, I'm going to make it a net crapshoot for them. I'm not going to let them use me as a fall guy for the crapshoot, right? I'm going to leave with my head held high that I re- told everyone it's a crapshoot and I'm not participating in your nonsense. I'll tell you what that is. That's exactly what I wanted to get across when I went on McCoon's, you know, that there was no way to win that debate. This is like the next step past understanding that. And what happens? I, I it's genius. It's genius. Huh? Yeah, which was, let me ask you this question. Which was better? Which was better? Jaron and those guys sticking around after they realized that those other homeboys were a bunch of dirtbags or walking off the set and saying, you know what? Your production is assed out. I'm out of here. Exactly. I like it. Well, why don't you say that in because... with, uh, with a little bit of. Uh, without necessity of hindsight in regards to Antarctica, because you can have the same exact sentiment about what they're doing currently, right? Yes. Sure. Uh, do we know anybody that's got an invitation to go? Darren? <clears throat> well, there's also this way of looking at it. If, if nobody representing, quote-unquote, the flat Earth side goes, then there's going to be people disseminating information, right? which may or might not even be true based on people's perceptions. So, for example, if there is or isn't a 24-hour sun, logically it doesn't actually retroengineer the shape of the Earth for either side, right? However, if the only people presenting information are the globe side and you have a chance to go for free and do your own thing, the problem is when you're on site, you have to be able to control your atmosphere to where you're accomplishing your goals severally from their goals. And if you can't maintain that, then, then you could end up screwing yourself over. But if you feel confident enough that you can maintain that, you know, for example, bring all your own cameras rather than rely on other people's cameras. Because there are people out there that want to know from a source they trust at least marginally what's actually going to occur down there. Is people trying to do any sleight of hand? And if you got, you know, t- two sides looking at it, it's like like if if you if somebody g- could go down there who is completely impartial, right? That would be ideal, but of course those people don't exist. But what's it going to prove? It's going to prove whether or not the people who were down there were on the up and up and whether or not they saw what they say they saw. 
Say they now, Neil, to you, that percent. might be no. Does it prove? Yes, that's fair. Neil, to you, that might be of no consequence. But to many people, it is of consequence. For you to dim dismiss their cares because of your advanced knowledge and time in, in the, in the uh, arena isn't fair. No, but the, I don't know. I think I think for anybody to go down there with a flat earth side is foolish. Let them go do what they do. They're going to anyway. It shows more that nobody from the flat earth side goes down there. There is no down there. It doesn't exist. Exactly, but that's how advanced knowledge that he's talking about. It's, it's not advanced knowledge. Oh, sorry, come on, come on, come on, come on. Yeah, I'm, I'm just saying it sarcastically. We don't show up. It's a win for us. Let them show up. Well, let me ask you this question. How many flat earthers are going to, if the guys go down there and don't see the 24-hour sun, say, see the earth is flat, how many flat earthers are going to do that, do you think? Ninety-nine percent, ninety-eight, ninety-nine. Yeah, most, most, right? <laughs> Even though logically it doesn't follow. Yeah. Exactly, it doesn't prove the Earth to be flat or anything. It just shows that it's not what they expected on the globe. The observation over a horizontal plane of reference isn't what they expected on a globe, eh? Cool. <laughs> yeah, it's that ridiculous, I know. But it is what it is, you know. <laughs> I actually, hey, in the, some look, ways... If somebody, it, if somebody offered me to go to the North Pole to make observations, right, pay for everything, and I actually had the time and freedom to do it, I'd do it. Just for the experience alone. And transversely, the same thing would apply to Antarctica. If I had the freedom to do it, I'd go and I'd do whatever the heck I wanted down there, right? I'd have my own agenda. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hell yeah! Just get out there and like on the like whenever they get a camera near you and start talking to you, be like, "Yeah, you guys are retarded." I just can't yeah. like, like heckle y'all, yeah, like, fun up you, you know? Yeah, I might go down there to try out. Um, painting on a canvas with Sub Zero paints, right? See how good it comes out. I'll just paint. Paint what I see in front of me. Maybe it's just the whole canvas going to be white because it's a snowstorm. <laughs> That'd be easy. No, instead they're arguing about who's got the rights to have a body cam down there and who came up with the idea first. And McToon came up with it first, but Jaron's nicked the idea and is selling it what they're arguing about. Well, it seems to me that from what I'm garnering from it <laughs> is that it kind of hit a brick wall. It's like they try to make this into something that everyone should be excited about and be interested in. And I, I'll be honest with you, I don't know what the last mm. video that came out from Will Duffy is or the one before that or the one before yeah. that probably because I stopped kind of being interested a few weeks back. The last interaction he had with me some weeks ago was when was when he started asking me about coming yeah. onto his channel to talk to Wolfie, right? Uh, at that point, I'd lost it. Uh, at that point after that, I lost interest. Um, so I don't know what's going on there. And I'm saying I'm not the only person that's kind of losing interest. And I have a feeling it could be a big nothing burger. Of course, it's a nothing burger. I mean, what are you going to do? Sit there and track the declination of the sun with respect to a horizontal plane of reference for 24 hours? <laughs> when are you going to get there? Yeah, well. Um, first of all, I want to say what's up, everybody. Um, <clears throat> secondly, um, I, hey, Dave. Hey, Dave. hey, what's up? I, I'm only doing Sorry. this because I I have been I have been um, dissected for less. And I know it's all, you know, um, semantics. And I don't want to be seen, come off pedantic. But I literally get a flush through my body, like a discomfort feeling, like when you get that feeling like, oh, man, they're about to draw blood or I'm about to get the surgery. Every time I hear any of you, especially AI, who, who basically everybody looks at as a 
you know, even you, Nathan, looks at as a person that speaks very, very specifically and tries to make sure that they don't say things. And like I said, back to what I've always been knocked for saying things. But every time I hear the word down there, it bothers me. It really bothers me. Why? I don't know. Maybe I guess the same way certain things I say bother y'all and make y'all kind of check me, which each one of you have checked me for for things that I've said that, you know, and it could be semantic. I'll just be speaking. But when y'all say that, no, it's, it's, you know, because it, it bothers it, it, me. You're begging the question. I agree. I, I, told, I don't like it. So I can't stand it. It bothers me. Because you're begging the question. I, I'll when tell you I, what. Uh, I'll, relieve, you know, I'll relieve your symptoms down is with respect to a horizontal plane of reference. Don't worry about it. I'll tell you what, from my time in the military, we use maps, right, to do everything. The maps have, have a system, right, and that system is with the English standard, which is left to right, top to bottom, is how the information is presented. So when you orient the map, the first rule of maps is to orient the map to the terrain. And to do that, you have to put the top of the map towards the top of your head and the bottom of the map towards your feet. And so when you're looking at that map, it's now vertical. But the ground you're looking at is horizontal, right? Yet, because you're looking at the map, the position of the bottom portion of the map is down relative to you. And that's the language in which people have been trained to use. And so when you say down in that sense, you're not talking about you know, anything kind of like antipodal assumptions. You're just talking about when you orient the, the, the maps that we have, Right. There's a there's clearly a left, right, up and down. There's clearly a grid. There's clearly numbers on it that ascend and descend, depending on whether you're going up or down, left or right. And that's just how they're charted. No one says we're going down to the North Pole, depending on the point of where you are on the terrain or on the map. But everybody says we're going down to Florida. We're going down to Australia. Well, we're that's, going my, down to yeah, that's my point. If you yeah, if you orient a map. For the United States, let's say, and you get a you get a map and you put it in front of your face right now, the way the map is outlaid in the convention that they've decided to do, which everybody uses, you know, Massachusetts and New England is on the top portion of the map, simply because that's the way the map is oriented, and Florida's on the bottom portion of the map. So if you're looking at the map, right? It would be accurate to describe, okay, we're going to go up to Florida, but it's just a convention about talking about the map, really. Yeah, it ain't no big deal. Really, it's not. So, for but example, like yeah, for example, I used to be able to navigate just with grid coordinates from, from the plugger, which is a, the military GPS system, it gives you certain coordinates. And if you have those coordinates and you know your initial coordinates, you can actually chart out just in your mind or on a piece of paper without a map and arrive at a location that's pretty accurate to where you set out just by going up, left, up, left, up, right, up. You know, you can arrive where you want to be as long as you do the math on the coordinates and, and you know, minus the right coordinates when you go up or down or whatever. And, of course, you're going to have to use um, a compass, right, sometimes. I, I understand all that, but what I would say is when it comes to Antarctica, although, yes, when you're orientating a map, right, in that way, yeah, Florida will be, let's say, United States, Florida will be down. If you're in the middle of the, of the United States, Florida will be down, Massachusetts and whatever will be up, Grant. But when it comes to Antarctica, when people are saying down to Antarctica, that is slightly mm -hmm. different. And why I say that's slightly different is because you're pre-assuming a place at the bottom of a globe as opposed to an orientation in relation to how you're looking at a map. And that's, that's the subtle difference. Now, you can disagree with that. I mean, that's just my position. No one has to go along with it. I would disagree that. Well, when, when I, I say down, when I imagine it, oh, sorry, go ahead. 
I imagine the uh, MGCRS, I believe it's called, which is the military grid maps. And it's basically a giant rectangle, right? With the continents in, in a band in the center and the Ant Antarctic uh, area at the bottom of the map and the um, Arctic area at the top of the map, right? And that's just the way that they put the grids. So whenever I'm thinking of it, that, I mean, that I, when I'm thinking of that, that representation of the map, right? And when you're looking at it and you have the convention in, in the Western world of left to right, top to bottom, like when you're describing it in those terms of the locations on the map, like up, down, left, right, it's really the only terms that you can use. There's like no other terms unless you're going to use north, south, east, west, which are practically equivalent when you're looking at that map. Well, I, that's what I was saying. I like the term north, south, east, west, or going there, you know, like the, the I'm, I'm not saying how to, fly. I don't know if you lay a map on a wall, on a, on a chalkboard, upright, vertical, from floor to ceiling, there's going to be an up and a down. But I don't see how when a, 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 a map is laid flat on a table, or let's say it's a giant map, and we're all walking on it, like like the way, like if everybody saw the certain movies where they see them, you know, they, some people, they look at the map and they put the map out on the floor and they walk across it. Walking across that map on that flat floor, there is no up and down. There's only a north and a south, a east and a west. Sorry to interrupt, just one Mike, sec, no. just one sec, sorry. Shout out to Chai and Kat. Oh, the depth of riches of wisdom and the knowledge of God, how unsearchable the judgments and his paths beyond tracing out Romans 11.33. At any point in chat, any of the Kat. descriptions, at any point in either side's descriptions of what or how they think of this, did they mention a curve? I would just state that if I was going to go going to the Antarctica, I would just change. Like I would not say I'm going down. I just say I'm going south to Antarctica. It's just a change of how you describe it. That's all it is, and it's thank a you, Brian. It's a sort of thing. One, yeah. he was. Yeah. yeah, you're right, Brian. That's what I'm saying, Brian. We've done it to other things. We stopped saying atmosphere. I mean, why can't exactly. we do it with the depth? I mean, what is the problem? Right. It's I have not down. You're I say atmosphere down. all the time, Holmes. I drop it. I drop atmosphere like it's a dirty word, homie. Right. Right. The important yeah, thing is, hold on a sec. The important thing is, is that people understand what down is. That's what's important. Now, in what y'all are bringing up world, think is it's worth bringing it. up because, right, what you're bringing up is worth bringing up. But it, it, I don't, I don't see what's wrong with it, you know, because when it is challenged, it's easily overcome. Uh, but in the world, John, do you have people believing that down is uh, is in relation to your local horizontal? Wait a second, did I hear? Dude, the keep in mind, he dropped the word out. feel like keep a bad habit. Yeah. Yeah, you never you never heard of a social atmosphere before? Is a social atmosphere referring to a gas and a shape? No. Yeah, in that context, I'm okay with it. But when we're speaking about the world and you know the nature of it, to say atmosphere is incorrect. But you know that. Sorry to interrupt. Another shout out to him. Say no, to improve the show, replace the entire panel of models and have Nathan dunk on them for three hours. Thank you for the super chat, him's sake. I think the important thing in it is that when it is brought up, as D Rose brought it up, that you pointed out how it doesn't help them to say it. Just like with atmosphere, if they bring it up in context of this discussion or I say it, <laughs> it's important that it's highlighted, but doesn't help them yeah fair point but also at the same time a lot of people who use these languages they're just using them because they've been established conventions and they have no um they're not imbuing it with these ideas of 
when I say down, I imagine I'm going, you know, across a an arc of a globe from the equator to the South Pole. It's like they're not even thinking that way. I I did like uh, the way Bev used to do it. Uh, to give an example, <clears throat> like when someone says atmosphere to me, I will just say like I have two choices. I can say three choices. I can just go along with it without using the word myself. I can correct them and say yeah, sphere shaped air, right? Or I can just say what you mean the air. You know what I mean? Taking away the big the big atmosphere world away from what they're trying to describe, which is just the air. Bev did, I remember listening to Bev, and it was my sentiment <clears throat> anyway, but I heard him deal with yeah. great circle roots. There was some boy was talking about great circle roots. He said, well, what's great about it? It's just a circle. You know, in other words, like, take away the, the supposed false validity you're giving to a word, or a term, I should say. Yeah, yeah well, sometimes, yeah, sometimes you can even ask them what, what they mean by what they say, and sometimes it defeat themselves. Yeah, yeah no kidding. <laughs> so, for yeah. example, in, in 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 listen, in the spirit of Bev's pedantic um, retardatory, if you look up the word sphere, right, the word sphere does not always refer to the surface of of a shape that has a equidistant radius, right? That's not what it means in all context. So to force the other person to be rebutted against a specific context with their, which they're not necessarily using in it, it may actually put them off and be like, wow, you're just a pedantic a-hole, kind of like Bev is. You know, They might walk away with a bad yeah. taste in their mouth. Who knows? Well, you become the, uh, the uh, gram uh, like a bit like the grammar police online that just annoys everyone. Yeah. And that's so what if you D look Rose at Sphere, is. if you look Shut at up, Sphere... It can re it can refer to an area of influence, or an area in which you're able to to move within a certain bounds. Right? It, it actually has no connotation upon radius or circles or any of that. Although it does, in the same sense of where you might say my sphere of influence or my circle of friends. Right? Exactly. I mean, that has other it has other other meanings to the world. Just keep in mind, an infinite amount of permutations of shape can exist within a gaseous environment, right? No. Regardless of whether that environment itself is contained by any infinite permutation of shape. So you can have an infinite permutation of boundary which in which the gas is in, and then you can have an infinite permutation of shape existing within the gaseous um, environment within the, the infinite boundary. You might have made that one a little too complicated. In other words, you could ask this question. What's the necessary shape of a container? Yeah, that's more like there it. There you go. Yeah, I like it. Yeah, I like that a lot better than there's infinite possibilities of shape. It's like, oh, no, it just takes the shape of its containment, right? How many shapes of a container can you Yeah, have? fair point. Fair point, but notice how when I was talking, I said nothing about the shape of the gas at all. I oh. only mentioned the container. <laughs> and the objects within the container that are not the gas having any particular shape. See, when everybody gets quiet like that, I think it's a slam dunk. Um, crap, I forgot my point now. Man, the other day we had a guy arguing about, um, you know, get the gas requires a container. And he said, well, if I could prove gas doesn't require a container or something like that, then the, then the earth is this or that. And then the other guy came in and said, hey, uh, dummy, you realize you could live, you could, um, 
you, your dumb idea about a globe could still be inside a giant container. And the other guy was like, what? And it's his mind exploded. Oh, yeah, I was going to say, but to describe any of those shapes to someone else, you would still need to do that with respect to a Cartesian plane, else you couldn't get the information across. Victory Royale! And Fortnite. Yeah, it's the first time I've won live. Happy days to me. What's Archie doing there? Knowing Rom was short for Romans is its own blessing. But here's a five pound bonus too, says Chari and Cat. Did I say Rom? <laughs> Romans. 2022, Nathan, we'll be playing a game, right? Uh, Are you looking at QA's screen right now? Yeah, I've got it up on screen. Can you take it off, QE? QE, you there? Thank you. That's awesome. Yeah, other than it's not mine. Oh. Yeah. <clears throat> My phone automatically cut off the end of the whatever. Did I miss anything? I thought I was talking about that crap. No, you didn't. No. I called you the grammar police. It's not about grammar, man. <laughs> Well, you know what, friends? Words are token meaning pairs. Without an established convention of the associated token and meaning, communication is impossible, which is why you have lexicons and dictionaries of which the pairs may result in multiple tokens having the same meaning and multiple meanings having the same token. And without proper context and parsing out of terms, it'd be impossible to know what someone else means by what they say. Oh, the Chariot Cat says I did say Romans, but because I knew the abbreviation, I've got an extra five pound super or five dollar super chat. Oh, thank you for the clarity, Chariot Cat. Twenty twenty two and eight, and would not be playing video games. Yeah, yeah that's a complete non sequitur. Twenty twenty two and eight, and would be involved in the topic, involved in the conversation, getting into it. Putting in his very, you know, sought after opinions. Instead, he's doing victory, victory royales on some video games. Number one, we are not married. Number two, this is not counselling. Hey, did you hear uh, AI's point about Tim Pool's show? With debating yeah. platforms. I'm doing the, the uh, wits at meat hooks right now. Platforms. Or debates. Yeah, you asked yeah, if I was listening. Yeah. I didn't respond, but I was. Just agreeing with AI so he stays off your back refracted. It's kind of pathetic. Uh, it was the point that I was trying to make when I went on McTunes, but he's he's short. Holy crap. Oh, hey, hey, oh, hold on. Wait, wait, let's do an do example wait, right now. John. Yeah, John, let's do an example right now. So, Neil obviously just did an egregious behavioral slight against you and now you're talking about what you should or shouldn't have done on mctoon when you should just be rebuking neil for his absolute ass hattery 2022 refracted <laughs> <laughs> yeah. exactly neil, guess what neil? it's actually okay it's actually okay, it's actually okay for people stuff. to agree with other people because they agree Don't with the merits of their points AI. you ever think of that neil 
Yeah, you ever thought of that one? Did it ever cross your mind? Yeah, he wouldn't have talked over you like that, Neil. Reminds me of an old joke. How yeah, many ravers? Twenty twenty one. How many how many ravers does it take to change a light bulb? Three. One to change the bulb. Two to sit around talking about how awesome the old bulb was. Yeah. <laughs> That's a cheap shot. And you know, hey guys, I just want to put this out there. there. I know, fair, fair, but I want to put this out there that um disagreements don't necessarily mean that you have to throw relationships under the bus, right? You could slap each other and show up the next day and shake hands, right? I just want to throw that out there for the zeitgeist in the community. And? I was about to say, and. Hold on. How profound. I up until a certain point. And liking someone's point has nothing to do with your personal opinion of them. My wife dislikes fish. She's more of a sausage person. I may divorce her. But since you've said that, AI, you know what? You're right. I'll keep her. Well, it's important to remember that if someone's right, they're right, regardless of whether you agree with them all the time or not. Don't be telling me what's important. 2022, Brian wouldn't have said that. All right, we're gonna, where's Adam? Let's do the book. Where's Adam? Where, where's QE? <laughs> QE's here. He was sharing copyright material. In spirit. Yeah, for example, I'm actually putting aside some time in 2025 to read the book and with my red pen. And then every other show, I'm going to bring up grammar Nazi points just for kicks. We've already got a flat C. Thank you. But I liked it because I'm horrible oh, at that. Flatsy's your, Flatsy's your your editing group, but then you publish the book. And then after that, people get to make, um, oh, Nathan misspelled some words. Therefore, he's wrong. <laughs> I don't think there'll be any spelling errors in it. I'd be I'd be very disappointed if there was. And if there was, I'd, I'd, I can't imagine that would be the case. It's, it'd be too heavily scrutinized. Pre-publishing. Republication. Yeah, that's true. You know, there's a time for accepting when someone corrects you, even if they're just being an a-hole about it, corrects you on your grammar. Grammar. <laughs> I've been a corrected, a few corrected several times, and I accept it. Just like, okay, that's yeah. wrong. Yeah, I should have wrote it that way. That's correct. I should have put in that there. I should have put them words. That should have been spelled different, differently. Yeah. Thanks. You're wrong. <laughs> Even though the person might be being an a-hole about it because they don't want to deal with another point, you can point out that they don't want to deal with that. But you can still say, yeah, you're correct about that. Because you are wrong. Right, I'm going to round out this uh, members-only live stream. I think... I only, only went live because OBS keeps resetting the stream output, not using the iGPU and using the main GPU, which I don't want it to do. Anyway, I've changed it again. And it'll probably change back tomorrow. I'll just have to remind myself to check it before I go live. Anyway, with that, I'll say a huge, massive, enormous thank you to both Discord and G Plus panels for making today's members-only live stream possible. If you're watching after the fact, be sure to like, comment, share, subscribe, join as a member if you wanted to take part in these members-only live streams. Of course, another massive thank you to everyone who smashed the super chat in the members-only live stream. I've been Nathan Oakley, and I will see you all in the next video.
Shout out to Jardo and Philip for hitting me up on PayPal. Especially you, Jardo. Massive super chat. Thank you very much indeed. Also you, Philip. Thank you very much for hitting me up on PayPal. PayPal links below this video. Really appreciate the support. See you all in the next one.